The Bulls drop the ball, the Bears pick it up and run with it, and now we have to figure out how low we're going to go. This is Invest with Jacob. Okay, guys, so in yesterday's video, I told you our key support level was 4322 on the futures chart because if it broke through that, wave four would move into wave one territory, which would invalidate our count and have us immediately looking lower in the ending diagonal pattern. And that's exactly what happened. In the overnights, they poked it down to 4320, which invalidated our structure. And then at the open, they pushed it down 60 points and kept it down there for the close. So the question now is how low do we go? I'll get into that in just one second. But first, if you're new here, welcome to the show, guys. My name is Jacob Gabbard, and this is Invest with Jacob, where we use Elliott Wave Theory to break down the S&P 500. I highly encourage you to hit that subscribe button down below so that you can get our daily S&P updates, our trade setups, and our buy alerts. Okay, guys, before I get into the analysis, I want to cover two things really quick. First, these videos. I record these videos between about 7 and 8.30 at night Pacific Standard Time. And I, then I release them at 3 a.m. Pacific Standard Time because that's about three and a half hours before the market opens. And that gives people plenty of time to review the video and know what to expect and review the overnights and know what to expect heading into the market. What happens between the time I record the video and the time the market opens? I can't control, guys. It's the overnights. They do what they do. And we'll see where we're at in the morning and reevaluate. That's why it's so important to be in my chat group, because every morning I give an update based on what happened overnight. This morning I said, hey, we invalidated. We're going to be going lower today. The ending diagonal pattern looks like it's going to start playing out. And there were people who made a lot of money on that down move. So I can't control what happens between the time I record the video and the time it's released. It is what it is. These are just a snapshot in time to give you guys an understanding before the market opens what I expect the market to do given key support and resistance levels. Now, that leads me into the second thing I wanted to talk about, which is Elliott Wave Theory in general and how you should interpret these videos. I'm not here to tell you exactly what the market's going to do every day. I don't know and you don't know. But with Elliott Wave Theory, we can take the literally infinite amount of possibilities of what the market can do and shrink it down into about four or five uh, possibilities with two or three high probabilities of what's going to happen. That is a huge advantage on how to observe the market. And the biggest thing I give you is key levels of support and resistance. And if those levels break, what you should expect to happen. I'm not here to tell you we're rallying overnight to 4,700. I'm here to tell you that the structure looks like this right now. But if it breaks this key level, the structure changes to this. Okay? So I don't want you to come to these videos and be like, well, this guy said we were going to rally yesterday, and now he says we're going down. He doesn't know anything. I'm just following the structure. I'm not here to tell you how the market's going to react. I'm here to tell you where the support and the resistance is and how you should react and how I think the market will react when it gets to those levels. For instance, yesterday I told you 4322 was an important support level. And if it broke that, we were likely headed down and both of those things happen. It broke that support and we headed down. So it's just a guideline for you to say, hey, if this is support, I know I, should enter, I can enter a trade here if it holds because we should be going up from there if the support holds, so I can enter a long trade. Hey, this is resistance. If we bounce off of that and start heading back down, I can enter a trade there uh, for a short trade as the market should be moving down. And you have a key stop for both of those. The support level is your stop for your calls and the resistance level is the stop for your puts. So guys, that's how you use Elliott Wave Theory to one, give you high probability options for what the market's gonna do, two, understand your key levels of support and resistance so you can trade off of them, and three, know what happens if those support and resistance levels break. All right, guys, so that's how you use these videos to hopefully do better in your trading and understand a little bit more about what the market's going to do on a given day. All right, with that, let's jump into the chart and take a look at what happened. Okay, guys, so here we are on the one-hour charts, and I wanted to zoom out a little bit to give you guys a little bit of a better view of this correction and how it's taking shape and what the ending diagonal actually looks like. So... Here we are at the top up here at wave three. It's 45.50. That's three of three. We come down in A, up in B. Pretty standard for a correction so far. But wave C is taking the shape of an ending diagonal. Now, the difference between a standard wave C, which would just be a five-wave structure, and a ending diagonal wave C, which is still a five-wave structure, is that the ending diagonal has all five waves take on an ABC shape. Okay? So... Wave one is ABC instead of one, two, three, four, five. Wave two is always ABC. Wave three is ABC instead of one, two, three, four, five, and so on. So the ending diagonal takes on three wave shapes instead of five wave shapes in the down moves. 
Okay, so from B, we come down in an A, B, C for one, up in an A, B, C for two. Okay, and then wave three of C is going to be your biggest wave and your strongest. So you're going to see bigger moves. So you got a big wave A down, a big wave B up. And then we have wave one of C because C waves are still five wave structures. So we have wave one of C of three down and then two up. Well, now we're building wave three of three of C down. And then we'll have four up and then five of C of three down to complete wave three of C. Then we should see a bounce up in four towards the 4320 region. Okay, now we'll complete wave four. Then wave five has a pretty big landing area because it, it actually targets around 4215 or so based on A equals C off this B top. However, we also have strong support at 4165, so it could go as low as 4165. But to be very honest with you, I'm skeptical of this pattern, and there's a few reasons why. Number one, Ending diagonals are notorious for breaking and not completing their pattern. All right. They just aren't reliable. They aren't easy to follow and trade. And while they are a guiding point for us, many times they end up breaking and becoming something else. All right. So we have that possibility. Uh, number two, we have seen, okay, support on the MACD at the high time, uh, high level time frames of a daily, hourly, four hour. Um, we're in the support zone for the MACD, which generally says uh, we should be bottoming sooner than later, and we shouldn't be going much lower because we have strong support in the MACD, and we have seen huge rallies off this kind of support. The third thing is we have a lower low in the SPX cash chart that we don't have on the ES chart. So the ES did not make a lower low today, which makes the SPX chart a little bit cleaner, actually, and it kind of makes me feel like if we get one more decent low that that could be the bottom. So really what we're kind of doing is watching a couple of things, all right? So first, we have to understand where our pivot point is. The pivot point is between the 1.0 extension and the 764 extension of waves one and two of wave three, okay? So we have wave three down here, we have one and two in place. So we measured here, it's already on here between one and two, and our 1.0 extension is 42.95. And our 764 is 4306. So 4295, 9425, but whatever. 4295 up to 4306 is our resistance zone that we need to stay below to keep this in a keep this in a bearish posture. It's tested it once, it's testing it again. Um, should be able to hold and come down and make a lower low. And once that happens, okay, I'll be looking for five waves up off of any lower low that we get, meaning. If we get a lower low that breaks this A here, down to, say, 42.13 or 42.40, um, if we get a lower low there and we get a five-wave structure up, I will immediately become bullish and start thinking that we have bottomed. Because the MACD says we're closer to bottoming, because ending diagonals are not um, reliable structures, and because the SPX has made another low, I, it just feels like we're not going to get all the way down to this low. However, until... It, it breaks out over 4306, okay? We're still in pressure down mode, so it needs to break out over this uh, 4306 pivot zone. And once it does that, all right, we can assess what it does from there to see what kind of structure we build. But I think we definitely are gonna get a lower low. We need one here. This is an ugly chart, and there's no reason for it to bottom right here next to this low. It should come down and make a lower low, but I will be buying another tranche of longs then, and if we complete four up and five down, then I'll buy another one here. So this is how layering in longs work. I talked about this in yesterday's video. We bought right here on this move, okay, because we got pretty close to this low and we had a chance to buy at a pretty good price. So we bought a one-third position there. When we make another low, we'll buy another third and cost average down, okay? And if we make another low, we'll buy our final third, okay, near the bottom and have a full position cost average down again, and be ready to ride the rally that should be coming off of this uh, correction. So that's how you kind of layer in your longs. You don't want to get caught because the rallies become so strong, all right? If we bottom overnight here, if it comes down and whatever, just starts to sink overnight and hits this 42.13, I'm just throwing this out there as an example. These are not key numbers, okay? If it comes down and hits this here and it decides it's time to rally, by the time you wake up tomorrow, we could be up in this you know, 4,300 area, 
and you've missed 80 points of the low because you didn't layer in when you could have. So that's how layering in works. It doesn't mean you buy them all at the bottom because you don't know exactly when the bottom's coming or where. We have ideas. We have support levels, but we don't know exactly when and where it's going to happen. So as we start to get closer and closer to our very key support levels, we start to add in smaller spots so that we can cost average down but continue to try to buy near the low of the the pullback so we can get the best value possible on those. Okay, they don't expire until January. We got plenty of time on them. So I'm not worried about the market moving down. That just gives me a chance to buy more longs at a better price. Okay, so basically, guys, what we are watching today is how this continues to fill out this ending diagonal. We're definitely thinking another low here because we didn't make a lower low and it's just a really awkward structure. So I'm thinking we should make another low. Right now, it's testing that resistance zone at 764 and uh, 1.0, which is, like I said, 42.94 up to 43.06. So it's testing that resistance zone. It should hold. We should get another low tomorrow, maybe before we even open. We may not get to see it in the cash market. We'll see. But we should get another low at least. And then we'll see from there what kind of structure we get. If we get a bottoming-looking structure, and we, like I said, we get five waves up, then I will not hesitate to be very bullish at that point. However, if we continue to have this chop and ending diagonal pattern fill out, then it's very possible we come down here in five. All right, so I wish I had a more concrete um, idea for you, but ending diagonals, as I said, are very unreliable, and it's just kind of where we are right now. Okay, guys, if you like the information that I put out in this video and you want real-time market updates from me, you need to get in my Facebook group. There's a link down in the description, so go ahead and click that link. All right. And it'll take you over to Facebook and you'll see my Facebook group. Now you do have to get approved to get in my Facebook group, but all you have to do is subscribe to my YouTube channel. So go ahead and subscribe, hit that button down below, subscribe to my channel. All right. I'll get you into the Facebook group. When you get in, hit this announcements tab right in the middle, scroll down, you'll see our documented trades. So you can see how we've been trading since the channel started as well as our Slack channel. So Slack is just a free chat channel. I'm on there all day during real-time market hours giving updates. I give out all of our buy alerts, all of our sell alerts. I tell you my strike prices, my expiration, all that good stuff. There's a very talented group of traders in there from the very beginner to the very expert who have different trading styles and ideas and have different philosophies on trading. It's a great place to learn, ask questions, and understand trading better. We would love to have you in there so we can make some money together. All right, guys. Key takeaways for today. This key level here, this 40... 294 to 4306. Okay. That is our key resistance zone. We need to hold that zone and push down to make another low. And then we have to evaluate the structure from there. It's very important to understand what the structure looks like. So if we get a bottoming pattern, we can go ahead and get in and turn bullish. And I will have updates for that in my chat room. All right, guys, that is the market update for today. I will talk to you tomorrow.